30 miles northeast of Boston, Massachusetts, on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean sits Cape Ann, a tight-knit community deeply connected to the sea. Comprised of Gloucester, Rockport, Manchester-by-the-Sea, and Essex, Cape Ann's clammers, fishermen, ice makers, restaurants, and shipbuilders all depend on the ocean and one another to survive. Join host Shepard Means as he takes an in-depth look at the Cape Ann ecosystem, from its people, to its products, to its lifestyle. On this episode of On the Waterfront, we examine the life cycle of one of the most celebrated and economically important species fished on Cape Ann, the lobster. Join Shep and Captain Tony Gross as they fish for lobsters aboard the Sand Dollar. Then, on to Captain Joe and Sons, a third generation wholesaling company, to see how the lobsters are offloaded and processed for sale. And finally, to Cruise Port and the Beauport Princess, to take part in a lobster bake while cruising Gloucester Harbor. This is On the Waterfront. Mm. This morning we're going to go fishing with Tony Gross for lobster over in Lanesville by uh, Lanes Cove, which is commonly known as the hole in the wall to the locals. It's uh, 4.43 in the a.m. It's late. My name's Shep Means and I've been working on the waterfront of Cape Ann for 40 years. The lobster industry is a vital part of Cape Ann. The industry itself is sustainable and that's one of the reasons that's so important. Tony Gross is a good friend of mine, a commercial lobsterman that lives in Anasquam and has been lobstering for about 40 years. The lobster is so important to Cape Ann. It uh, is one of the most precious commodities that we have. It brings in the tourists, and since the fishing decline, it's become even more important. Lobstering's really hard work. I don't think there's any job on the waterfront that isn't hard work. New Englanders have a great work ethic and they have a hard bark on them. They go out and work their tails off seven days a week, a lot of them. What's up? Hmm? Big eggers. Yep. No good female. Now we have to notch them. The regulations set down by the Division of Marine Fisheries has all the female egg bearers being notched, and so it sustains the young lobsters. And that's been going on since the turn of the century. Hey, here we go. Oh, yeah, baby. There's a big girl. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, honey. Here we go. Here's a couple of nice boys. There you go. I'd say there's probably twice as many boats as there were probably 30 years ago now. When you can't catch cod and haddock, you switch over from a non-sustainable industry to a sustainable one, which is lobstering. This year, there was a lot more guys from Rockport came over. Right. That guy who went by us inside, he's from Manchester. Wow. Younger guys in Rockport are starting, you know, so they're fishing harder, so they expand their areas. I mean, last year, a blind man could find them. It was just, they were everywhere. Now that's what we're looking for. Yes, sir. That's a nice lobster. It is. It's a $10 bug. The lobstermen have a gauge. They have to be three and a quarter inches from the eye socket to the carapace in the back. Once they decided to keep them, they have a holding pen or a little pool that they throw them in to keep them fresh until they bring them to market. Eggs and a V. Eggs 
and eggs novi. Once they unload the trap, they get all the lobsters out, then they rebate them, and that uh, the stern man is doing that. And uh, then they put them right back out, usually in the same place or close, that way they don't have to travel that far because time is of the essence. The bait's a big part of lobstering. It's a multi-million dollar business also in Massachusetts. They use herring, manhaden, or pogies, and they use carcasses of uh, cut fish also. So Tony, you start fishing in April or May? April. April, and you fish until? First of the year. Really? Yeah. So that's the season. So you get the uh, you get the winter off, and what do you do there? Work on your gear, or work on the gear. If they let me, I'll go jigging for cod. Yeah. They used to be allowed 300 pounds. This year, it's two, right now, it's zero. Thirty-six to go. Joey Shimataro and Frank run and own Captain Joe and Sons in East Gloucester. It's a third generation family business and they buy and sell a lot of local lobsters in Gloucester. The boats come right up to the dock and they also come in by truck like Tony did. That's a lot of bugs. So, is this a typical day's catch for you, Tony? This year's been a good year. It's been a good year, that's a good thing. How long have you been selling to Joey? Uh, how about 11 years? Nice. That's in 10 year. Joey and Frank absolutely earn every penny. They work their tails off over there. They love what they do, but it's hard work and they never stop. They're very efficient and they've been doing it for their whole lives. What are you doing now, Joey? Making them 100 pound crates. Yep. So they can get in the water and, and survive. Fast. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. The boat comes in, hook up the, hook up the lobsters with a strap on the, on the crates or the totes. Put it on the wooden cart. Bring it over to scale. Get a tally. Bring it to a different scale to make the crates 100 pounds. Put them in the tank. And it's that simple. Joey, tell us about the business, the history. Uh, Captain Joe was, was uh, our grandfather. My cousin Frank is my partner. We're, we're uh, third generation fish and lobster dealers. Now it's all, all lobsters, right. but uh, he started it. He, after, he was a fisherman. He decided he wanted to be on land and, and he purchased this piece of property on uh, Gloucester Harbor. Well, they were processing whiting for a lot of years. And then the fathers got more into the ground fish industry. And that's when we came on the scene. We, we, we've been working here alongside our fathers and grandfather since we were nine every summer and after school. Fishermen, back in the day when we started, were trained to kill fish. Bring in as much as you can. At that time, I was one of these people, we saw that as an infinite resource. We did not see that back in the 70s as something that was gonna taper down. And I remember in college in 1989, my father said to me, graduation day, I was at a crossroads, I was either gonna become an economics professor or come down the dock and he said to me, Joe, they're always going to be fish and they're always going to have to have a place to offload them. At that time, I never thought that that wasn't going to be the case, but it is the case. The lobster industry and, and the lobstermen themselves, the Mass Lobstermen Association, they were uh, efficient and smart stewards of their industry because they introduced laws to help protect their industry going forward. They were the initiators. Right, you know, the V-notching, the, the, the minimum sizes. You could see year after year how close the landings are at the end of the year. The sad part is though, this piece of property is 
pretty fairly big piece of property. A lot of it is is not maintained the way you'd like to have it maintained. There's two men earning a living off of this piece of property as opposed to 200. That's how many you had? There was a couple different buildings right. here, pack and whiting, and they, would, and they had crews of women that would, you know, it would offload 100,000 pounds of whiting a day and pack it and, and squid and, you know, all the different kind of fish. I think that they said there was like 200 fishing schooners moored off of Eastern Point. I yeah. mean, these are big boats. Right. And they were on moorings because there wasn't enough space in the harbor to, to keep tie them. up, right. Now, I mean, they, I think there's less than 20 draggers in this harbor. It's, it's you know? tragic. That's why we had to downsize. Right, of course. That was it. Uh, we see the fishing stocks decline. We see the face of Gloucester changing. Uh, it's becoming a destination and a great place to visit instead of really a fishing port. Tourists come here for the unbelievable seafood that we have, and lobster is a huge part of it. Cruise Port is the biggest investment in Gloucester in decades. It's two acres right on the waterfront that has a deep port access for ships up to 500 feet. The Boatport Princess cruises Gloucester Harbor with dinner, music, caterable for weddings. We have a little over 50 people today. They're coming up to discover Cape Ann, so they're going on a beautiful cruise. They're seeing the sites, talking about some of the historical uh, things that we'll be passing by. We get people from all over the world, really, in the summer. So when they think of coming to Massachusetts, they're thinking of lobsters. So. These guys were swimming around yesterday. <sighs> they should make cologne out of that. And this summer, all the lobsters that we had all came from Captain Joe that we did on this boat. So That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, the steamers were local and the um, corn was local. Clients are very interested in where it comes from. They want it to come from, you know, local waters or, you know, and help local people too. I would still rather pay a little bit more and know that I'm helping somebody locally. I think by, you know, not working with the middleman and selling directly to us too is help them out too, you know, they get to keep that, you know. Again, we're happy because they come right off the boat right to us, you know, which is, is nice. And, you know, you, you know you're dealing with the, the lobstermen. It's a hard business and we're all working in the same business as we should be supporting each other, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's how we're going to survive. The lobster is delicious. I've already eaten the tail. These are the knuckles there. The claws. They very nicely cracked them for us, but I will use the nutcracker. There's a little tendon in there a lot of times you have to take out. They taste very, very fresh, because they were in the water yesterday, or maybe even this morning. Thinking about what a beautiful community we live in, you know, I wonder what the future's gonna hold. We can see Cape Ann changing before our very eyes. Lobstering is a part of the past, the present, and the future of Cape Ann. The lobsters play a big role in keeping a lot of fishermen working. It's gonna replace the fish that aren't here anymore. This is such a vibrant, wonderful community with hard working people. I'm so confident that we can overcome the obstacles. It's a challenge, but we're up to it.